The pink city of Jaipur gave us the perfect start. England have won off the very last ball of the match. As we won the opening one-day international of England's tour to India in 1993. What a fantastic finish. And the beers are out. It was a memory to cling to as things were about to take a turn for the worse. I picked up a virus or something where I just didn't feel right. Keep your eyes closed, eh? I'm not enjoying this. Using behind-the-scenes footage taken by one of our players, Dermot Reeve, we look back on a tour never to be forgotten by those who were there. Somebody here's got this horribly wrong. That's it. This has been a marvellous, marvellous hundred. Bowling to Azza, it was always challenging. You've got a little red ball and you've got to get a wicket. Well, one thing was for sure, I was always going to get a bat. You know what I mean? <laughs> we bowled him! Kumble, we hadn't seen before. He was really hard work. <laughs> so important to get off to a good start as you can. I'm afraid, sadly, the way it went was the start of more misery as the whole series unfolded. How's Robin playing? <laughs> Needs to improve. <laughs> <laughs>
till then you sort of look around you just say what sort of field have i got here your processes and your plans are being totally dismantled by the batsman the spinners were working hard to find their form but the busiest man in the build-up to the first test was our physio dave rooster roberts for England, these are worrying times, with a viral chest infection doing the rounds. Started with Devon Malcolm in Bhubaneswar. Since then, it's gone through Paul Taylor, Graham Gooch is just recovering from it, and so is Ian Salisbury. And this morning, we've had to uh, keep Mike Atherton back at the hotel because he seems to have gone down with the same thing. The mystery virus has claimed yet yeah, three more, three more victims. Three. Dick Blakey over there, you can see, looking very well. <laughs> I'd been to India before, and I knew that anyone could get ill over there in the subcontinent if you just eat something which is not right, or you can pick up something from the water. But, you know, everyone was likely to catch something. You know, it's just a matter of luck, really. Now, I didn't have tummy troubles in India. I don't know, I picked up a virus or something where I just didn't feel right all the time. And I couldn't get rid of this sort of muzzy feeling in my head and coughing up phlegm and stuff like that. It was just there all the time. Keep your eyes closed, eh? Don't drink it all at once. One man definitely out of the reckoning is Philip de Freitas. He's suffering from a groin strain and was just an onlooker today. There's the adductor magnus tendon. And as you can see, you might be able to see the bruising that's still there. Yeah. A lot of this tenderness that he's suffering from now will be through the depth of my frictional massage. It would be quite painful anyway. To remind me in a torn area as well. You'd think he was having a baby, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. Hi, Paul. <clears throat> Getting a bit of a sweat on here. Yes. And um, the doctor who's is uh, What's he doing? He's kind of sterilising a pen knife. And he's going to stick it, is he, through... Oh, it looks like he's already done it. Oh, I better get out of the way. Ow! That's a good job. No swearing on video. Oh! Jeez! Bruce, dead? Stay still. We've got a result of corn dog, some pies, baked beans, soup, some tuna, some sardines that have just appeared. So, you know, the boys love a little bit of a feast on the lunch. All right. I think when you've a touring party of 16, and you've always three, four, five that are not well, it's very, very difficult to pick up a team that's going to be competitive with the home side that has access to a, a fast, wealthy place. You always give me an always look for camera shy. You're not camera shy. A more serious casualty was Clem Driver, our scorer, who returned home having suffered a heart attack. Monica Reeve, Dermot's mum, stepped in. I started when Dermot was 11. I turned up to a game and he said, Mum, will you score? Once the game starts, I'll forget it's a test match. It'll just be like the other games I've done. Back in England, the MCC revolt over the non-selection of David Gower had petered out. Failure for the Rebels at the final count. The cricketing establishment closed ranks. A huge postal vote helped defeat the Rebels. 4,600 votes against the selectors, more than 6,000 in support. The campaign had started over the omission of David Gower from England's tour to India. It spread to dissatisfaction over the general selection policy. Also in town today, but not to play, of course, David Gower. Here to commentate for Sky Sports, he was in reflective mood about that MCC vote. Two or three months ago now, it was all quite exciting, and I was sort of feeling, I don't know, sort of slightly livid about things. Now that the time has, has passed and we've had time to think about it and relax, then fine, you know, in many ways I'm glad that they finished. The issue is probably dead now.
unique moment for England's captain Graham Gooch as he's presented with a silver salver to mark his 100th test match for England. Well, have you got anything special lined up in the way of celebrations for the 100th cap? You'd like um, to celebrate it with 100 a la boycott? Not really, no. I mean, um, he's, not, he's not shy at telling you what he's done, but um, I go out there every time trying to score 100 and I go out there every time trying to win the match. I don't think you've run as many people out as he has, have you? No, one of my claims to fame is I run him out more times than he run me out. <laughs> and no doubt, if you ask him, he'll remember exactly when they were. Well, Geoffrey Boycott, can you remember each one? I know he's ahead, because <laughs> I haven't run him out. He's run me out twice, actually. All in off. There we go. Gat, so far on this tour, look at that, has lost how much, Gat? Oh, about 10 kilos. 10 ounces. No, he's saying no. Is he? He's saying no. Just check his bag, Dad. Oh! Right, better put them back. There they go. That should last him, ooh, oh, 10 minutes to none. <laughs> <laughs> a very good morning to you and welcome to our live and exclusive coverage of the first Charmina Test match between India and England. And I can give you some early team news. Paul Taylor will make his debut for England, the left arm seamer from North Ants. Michael Atherton, though, is unfit. And India, well, they are playing three spinners. And that is a bit of a surprise because England are playing four seamers. Who's got it right? Who's read the pitch correctly? Let's see what Geoffrey makes of it. Well, a glorious morning here for Test Match Cricket. Look at this pitch. It's very dry indeed and it's cracked all over. It's been prepared for a long time. It's a virgin surface, a newly relayed surface six months ago. I remember looking Never at the pitch with Gucci and Keith Fletcher. Fletcher. And again, I'm pretty certain they involved Gat and Embers as well. So when you saw no grass and cracks, the general chat was yeah, it could go through the top and it, and, uh, it could keep low. So if we play our quick bowlers who bowl straight, we could be in the game here. We played four seamers, one spinner. They played one seamer and three spinners. There's me, a youngster, thinking somebody here has got this horribly wrong. I think it's a bit of a throwback from before where Indian batsmen handle our spin quite well whereas they were not as competent against our pace bowlers. The balance of the attack was not the only surprise. After struggling in the warm-up games, Embers and Tuffers were out, and Ian Salisbury, originally in India as a net bowler, was in. John and Tuffers, they didn't look that effective in the games before. Now, Ian, had come over to bowl in the nets. He obviously was a new kid on the block and he was turning the ball. And although he wasn't as accurate, he did look capable of taking wickets. First day of the match in Calcutta. Jeffrey, a quick report on the wicket. They've been preparing it with lots of rolling. I think you get a lowest bounce. Lo lo lovely rolling, rolling. More or less over prepared. That's why you're getting all these crazy paving cracks. Oh, My dear old thing, thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes. you like to do it again? Or that was just a test. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a take. That's absolutely a take. Splendid. Here we have the judge man. Knocking his bat in. Knocking the bat. I just got two runs and two of them, but I'm not in the bat. You got a hundred in your last game. Oh, they want to make it. They want to make it. Are they? Oh, you look good to me. In the middle. Second best batsman in the world. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Best net player in the world. Yeah. This is just my assumption of the wicket. Uh, it, it, uh, it's a bit loose. Uh, I feel on the one side, it's going to possibly uh, be a little uneven. And from the other side, it'll probably turn turn slowly and just get very low and slow. Right. So, it's if looking I was a skipper, I would certainly look to be winning the toss and that's it. Well, this was the toss a short while ago and I can tell you it's been won by India and not surprisingly, India bat. That's it. That's going to race away for four. When he was on the go, Mohamed Azaruddin was a devastating batsman and he lit up the opening day. This has been a marvellous, marvellous hundred. He was an entertainer. He was a player that liked to take the attack to the bowlers. In those conditions against our attack, you know, he had full control and composure against us. Bowling to Azar. It was always challenging. You bowl outside the off stump and his fast hands would be at you. 
square cutting. But I was always mindful of bowling at the stumps of him because as soon as you came on the stumps, he would flip you away. I think he scored at a runner ball, literally a runner ball. In the background, the firecrackers have gone off. The Indians love their fireworks. They love to celebrate hundreds like this in traditional fashion. It's a weird situation because, first of all, you're watching people who a moment ago or two were your teammates. So actually you want them to do well. I love going to the subcontinent. I'd enjoyed it as a player. This was the first time as a commentator. You know, it's a lot less pressure, of course, as we all know, sitting in the commentary box. So you actually get no joy at all out of seeing them do badly. Mohamed Azaruddin, many, many congratulations. You must be delighted. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm delighted because uh, this was eluding me for a long, long time, about uh, 10, 11 test matches. So, I mean, I had to get done that uh, sometime or the other. There are all sorts of people who are saying that you shouldn't be captain, that your form didn't get it right. So you've uh, proved that wrong for a start. Right, yeah, no, I just want to show, show to them that I mean, uh, my bat would do the talking. He was in greedy mood as well, eventually making 182. Well, I remember... India batting for quite some time as they're getting 180 odd, and I remember it took a long while actually. I think it was, took them right into the sort of back end of the second day. Well, I'd kept wicket for well, I don't know 130 overs, something like so. And I remember Gat saying, "Do you want to drop down the order?" Uh, and he would open. And I said, "No." I, one, I saw that as a sign of weakness, and I felt, "No, I'm in the side to open and keep, so I, I therefore have to do it." And yeah, went off, took the tape off my fingers, put my batting gear on, and two minutes later, we're back sat in the dressing room again. Well, Alex Stewart will take strike for the second over of the England innings. We saw him run off the field, change his wicket-keeping gloves for batting gloves, get on his batting pads for his wicket-keeping pads, and he's out there straight away. And that is difficult with having no respite at all. to take the bat away at the last moment to Manoj Prabhakar's first ball. And the England vice-captain has gone for a duck. <laughs> Inside edge off the back foot, back onto my stumps. Yeah, it wasn't ideal. <laughs> it was just so disappointing because it was just such a waste of a wicket, an important wicket, because, you know, like any Test series, you, you need to start well. Alec was the only top-order batsman not to be trapped in the web woven by one of India's three spinners, Raju, Chowan and Comble. Well, one thing was for sure, Rathas, during that trip, I was always going to get a bat. You know what I mean? <laughs> Comble we hadn't seen before. The pacey bowl, the lengthy bowl, caused everyone a lot of trouble. He was tough and he, he opened the bowling and Obviously, the new ball skidded on and everything happened that much quicker. So he was really hard work. Cumbly was a different type of bowler. He was tall, he had a high arm, so his ability to bowl the leg spinner was reduced, but his ability to get bounce with the top spinner and the googly and to create pressure was there for all to see, and he caused us a lot of problems. We then had Raju, who I just saw him as a regulation left-arm spinner. The memory bowled it very slow, but went up and down. But on the surface, obviously, created issues. And then Chowan bowled pretty quick off-spin, and some spun as much as Murali at times. But yeah, it, it was hard work putting it politely. It's like old London town, isn't it? Poor air quality. This is actually the uh, this is the morning of the um, third day of the first test. Oh, there's Phil Defrayers. I can't quite see if it's Phil actually. <laughs> the uh, the fog. I don't think we'll be starting on time unless this lifts soon. Following on, it seemed the fog had not lifted for our captain.
This is not excuse for the way I play, but I remember I just sort of overbalanced and, and I just lost focus, you know, and I just sort of stepped out the crease almost. It was not like a, you come down the wicket or dragged your foot out the ground. After the ball had gone, I just lifted my foot for some reason and sort of overbalanced. And, and I, I sort of, not lost consciousness, but was not fully, you know, with it. In their second innings, India needed just 79 to win. Gooch, don't worry, be happy. Well, I'm sure Gooch will... Um, won't let it get him down too much. He doesn't like losing. The noise is absolutely incredible. The Indian flag being waved. Goodbye, England, says the banner. The Indian dressing room, they're all on their feet, waiting for the moment that will mark their successful return to Test Match cricket. It's good one with the last ball in Test Match at Eden Gardens. That's it. Ben O'Camley has pulled the ball away. It's an emphatic four to finish the game. Now let's have some fireworks. War game. Incredible scenes here as India win the first Charms Cup Test match. And they do it in some style as well by eight wickets. Man of the match, and they've also made you captain for the rest of the series. How do you think the series is going to go from here on in? Yeah, well, once one win doesn't make a summer, we've got to keep winning, and uh, maybe you know, we've got to look forward to the next couple of games, and it's going to be very good. We're disappointed, obviously. We didn't play well enough over the three days, four, four or five days. And, you know, credit to India, they deserve to win the match. The Indian batsmen basically dominated us all the way through, and we couldn't make any inroads really into them and uh, you know Raju, uh, Chowan, the off spinner and Cumberley, they were very effective in those conditions. What do you um, put the difference in the two sides down to? You pick the wrong sides. I mean you pick four seamers instead of uh, three seamers and two spinners or maybe three spinners. I mean yeah. that was a difference in wicket positioning as well. You know we've gone one down before. <laughs> It's not the end of the world, we've got to come back and uh, try and, you know, fight our way back in. OK, you're feeling a bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> so important, you know, as a team to get off to a good start as you can. And I, I think with all the train journeys and the flights and the illnesses, it just didn't seem that it was all going in the right direction, shall I say. Is that what we were meant to do? <laughs> I, I couldn't hear a word down here, not a word. I'm afraid, sadly, that game, the way it went, was the start of more misery as the whole Test Match series unfolded. It's one for the archive. Graham Gooch, the England captain, will not play in this Test Match. Put my finger down my throat and I forced myself to be sick. I had the best view of the easiest catch that's ever been dropped. It was an absolute dolly. It was horribly embarrassing. I was driving around popping wheelies on my new mountain bike in front of all the crowd. We all thought, we've got a chance in this game. I'm afraid not. Sky Sports Cricket. Feel it all.